Greetings friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sashavelich. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. Have you ever wondered really, when Jesus Christ returns, will most people that profess Christ recognize Jesus when he returns? World Daily Net Daily editor Joseph uh, Farah correctly seemed to doubt that. Uh, and uh, in his article, we're quoting out the article published on WND.com, uh, how Christians will recognize Jesus again. He asks that question and he gives this very interesting answer to the question. When the Jewish people finally received their Messiah, the vast majority did not recognize him, says Joseph Farah, and then he continues. When he returns, will Christians make the same mistake? That's the fear WND founder Joseph Farah expressed in an interview with Paul McGeary on Apocalypse and the End Times on God TV. It was part of a wide-ranging conversation about the last days and uh, uh, how the last days will be far different than what many believers expect. Who is Jesus and how is he going to come back, Farah asked. You know, a lot of people missed Christ the first time he came. Most of the Jews did not recognize him as their Messiah. They had a misunderstanding of how the Messiah was going to come. And they were going a lot by man's teaching rather than going back to the scriptures. And I wonder when Jesus does come back, if many people in the church are going to miss him too. This Jewish guy is going to come back on the Mount of Olives as prophesied, and he's going to become king of Israel, Farah said rudely. And the whole world is going to center around Israel at this point. Are they going to recognize him, or are they going to be fooled by an imposter that we call the Antichrist, who is going to do all kinds of signs and miracles, etc.? Truly becoming knowledgeable about the Bible and the roots of the Christian faith is a passionate concern of Pharaoh. And he's, he's the one who urges all believers to examine their beliefs. More than a billion people in the world call themselves Christians. How many of them are authentic Christians, he asked. Did Jesus come to start a new religion? No, he preached only to the house of Israel during his earthly ministry. The apostles did initially also, and only later, decades later perhaps, did they recognize that perhaps Gentiles could be part of this and it's such a blessing that we are. The notion of replacement theology is why Israel still is the most controversial country in the world today. End of the quote. And he mourned the average Christian's lack of knowledge about the millennial kingdom and the earthly rule of Jesus Christ. Quote, if you ask the average Christian about that, they have no understanding, he explained. We've got to a perfect and, uh, and redeem this world. The, uh, to bring it back to the Garden of Eden, that's one goal. That's what Jesus is coming back to do. And to rule and reign from Jerusalem with a rod of iron. Are people prepared for this sweet Jesus that they read about in the New Testament to rule and reign from Jerusalem with a rod of iron? These are questions I think it's important for Christians to challenge themselves with. Now, Joseph Ferrer a uh, non-Roman Catholic is correct that relatively few who profess Christ believe in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, even though the Bible teaches it in several places, like in Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6. Few understand that Jesus will rule with a rod of iron, as mentioned in Revelation 12, 5 and Revelation 19, 15, and even less understand the good news of the kingdom of God, and most are sorely ignorant of the true history of the faithful Christian church, which in Jude 3, uh, we have details because Jude 3 for the, you know, gives us the details of that. Now, what about Roman Catholics? Well, officially, they do not believe in their millennial reign, in spite of the fact that the Roman Catholic Church admits that many of their claimed early saints taught the millennium. Now, they strongly condemn this belief as a doctrine of Antichrist. And speaking of Antichrist, it says the Antichrist deception already begins to take shape in the world every time the claim is made to realize within history that messianic hope, which can only be realized beyond history through the 
eschatological judgment. The church has rejected even modified forms of this falsification of the kingdom to come under the name of millenarianism, especially the intrinsically perverse political form of a secular messianism. Now, this is from Catechism of the Catholic Church, in premature prot- protest plus Joseph Card- Cardinal Ratzinger, Double Day, New York, 1995, page 194. Now, it should be noted that, that the millennial teaching ap- appears to be the only doctrine associated with Antichrist that is condemned in the current official catechism of the Catholic Church, which is the first new one in hundreds of years. The one that has the imprimatur of Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, who is now called Pope Emeritus and was Pope Benedict XVI. Now, while some Greco-Roman Catholic writers are correct, certain contradictory Roman Catholic writings and prophecies teach that Antichrist will, number one, he will cite scriptures as proof of his messiahship. Number two, will keep and promote the Seventh-day Sabbath. Number three, will teach against idols and an idol-related mass. Number four, will teach that the Catholic religion is false. Number five, will renumber the Ten Commandments. Number six, will be Jewish. Number seven, will observe the Jewish rites. Number eight, will have supporters who teach against the Trinity. Number nine, will preach the millennial gospel of the kingdom. Number ten, will preach that there is a coming future opportunity for salvation. Number 11 will come after thunders, lightning, earthquakes, mountains being leveled and great hail. Number 12 will win the battle of Armageddon. Number 13 will come after the destruction of the Roman Empire. Number 14 will claim to be the Messiah. And number 15 will have those that appear to be resurrected saints with him. Well, Jesus said the scriptures testified who he was in John 5, 39. He also kept the seven-day Sabbath. He taught against idols. He never advocated the wearing of crosses on the hands or forehead, like we see in Revelation 13, 16 and Revelation 20, verse 4. Jesus taught that those who held to a religion based upon tradition over the Bible is false. He taught that all the Ten Commandments, as the continuing Church of God teaches them, was Jewish, like John 4, verse 9 and 10, Matthew 1 verse 1 to 3 and Luke chapter 3 verse 23 through 33. Jesus also kept the Jewish practices, so-called Jewish practices like Passover. We pray have the proof of that in Matthew 26, 18. And he also kept the Feast of Tabernacles, proof of death in John chapter 7 verse 2 and verse 10. Jesus has always had a non-Trinitarian supporters. He taught the millennial gospel of the kingdom. He taught that there would be a future opportunity for salvation, which all shows that thunders, lightning, earthquakes... He also said that they all precede his coming, Revelation 16, verses 17 through 21, shows that the forces of evil gathered at Megiddo lose, Megiddo or Armageddon, they lose Revelation 16, verses 13 through 16, and Revelation 19, verses 17 through 21. He also told that he will reign after the destruction of the Roman Empire, Revelation 19, verses 2 through 8, and he will teach he is the Messiah, John 4, verse 25 and 26. And his apostle Paul and John were inspired to write that resurrected saints will come with Jesus and reign at his second coming. Now this, it appears that uh, certain private Catholic prophecies have been given to warn the world that when Jesus comes, he will be the Antichrist. Now this may be part of the reason that the Bible warns that people will be angry and will actually make war against and war with Jesus when he returns. Revelation 18, verse 11. Sorry, uh, the other way around. Revelation uh, 11, verse 18. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Also in uh, Revelation 19, 19, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gather together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. So thus, we believe that Satan inspired a lot of false prophecies and improper theology so that those who are not the very elect will be deceived as we are warned in Matthew 24, 24, and will actually fight against Jesus, Revelation 19, 19. This is indeed part of Satan's plan. This is part of why all who profess Christ need to understand who the true church has been 
from the beginning, who the true church was in the intervening years, and who the true church actually will be in the end. And for more details, you can indeed find our uh, one of our articles entitled History of Early Christianity, History of Early Christianity page, and you'll find a free online booklets continuing history of the Church of God and where is the true church, where is the true Christian church today. Furthermore, it needs to be understood that some Catholics also seem to teach the ones that those of us in the Church of God consider to be the two witnesses and they will be announcing the Antichrist. Uh, one of those Catholic uh, thinkers was Birch, page 556, and uh, some also, uh, 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 some Catholics also seem to teach that during the time we in the Church of God call the Great Great Tribulation, there will be supernaturally fed people opposed to the Catholic Church dwelling in caves that will be the advance guard of the son of perdition. So, sadly, many Greco-Roman Catholic prophecies and writings apparently are directed against those in the protected Philadelphia remnant of the Church of God and against Jesus Christ. Many pronouncements by supporters of Martin Luther did as well. Those that do not understand the truth about Jesus, church history and prophecy will be indeed deceived. But you, you don't have to be deceived. On the contrary, why should you be? And after all, you know, should you, why don't you understand? Should you be understanding who is Christ or who is Antichrist? Well, indeed. Uh, would you be deceived by Antichrist? Well, yes, indeed. There is a man of son of perdition. Uh, 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 there is a man prophesied in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 who will be coming to deceive the whole world by the various, pro uh, various uh, miracles that he'll be, that'll be he'll write, uh, well, he will perform those miracles by the inspiration of Satan himself. That is what the Bible prophecy teaches us. He will be the uh, son of perdition, as the Second Thessalonians call him. Indeed, that will be the king of the north, as called in Daniel chapter 11. He'll be the first beast of Revelation 13. In Revelation 13, we see that the beast coming out of the sea is actually a combine of all the previous beasts. It's the last, the, the, the last, very last resurrection of the Holy Roman, so-called Holy Roman Empire, and it will encompass all of the previous beasts, all of the powers of the previous world ruling kingdoms. On the head, on the top of that one will be the man that we call, generally call Antichrist because we confuse him with the religious leader. Uh, we call him actually, the, the, he's called Great Monarch in the Catholic prophecies, but the religious leader, the great, the false prophet, the second beast of Revelation 13, will be indeed Antichrist because Antichrist is a religious title. It's not a secular title. So, we're going to see, basically, on the world scene, we're going to see indeed, very soon, the coming of the first beast. He'll be a European leader of German origin. He'll be of aristocratic, uh, descendants. He'll be a descendant of aristocracy. He's certainly going to be partly German, but most likely very much completely German. And he is sure to actually become the uh, European Union or European uh, United States of Europe envoy once the regional nuclear war breaks out between in the Middle East between uh, most likely Iran and uh, Syria uh, against Israel, the state of Israel. He'll be the one who'll broker the peace deal, and he'll be the one who will usher in the world peace, and he'll be celebrated around the world as the Messiah, as the one who saved the world. Uh, from all the things that we could decipher so far by observing the uh, current political uh, scene and the current political things, we can basically say with much assuredness that the most likely person to be the one will be uh, will be a former German defense minister, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg. Now, friends, of course, for more information, you can go to our BibleNewsProphecy.net uh, for more world analysis as well. And uh, my name is Alexander Sashavedis. This was the Bible News Prophecy Program. Until next time, goodbye, friends.